Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Friday of the first week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus returned to Capernaum after some days, it became known that he was at home. Many gathered together so that there was no longer room for them, not even around the door. And he preached the word to them. They came bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men. Unable to get near Jesus because of the crowd, they opened up the roof above him. After they had broken through, they let down the mat on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Child, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there asking themselves, Why does this man speak that way? He is blaspheming. Who but God alone can forgive sins? Jesus immediately knew in his mind what they were thinking to themselves, so he said, Why are you thinking such things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, Rise, pick up your mat, and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority to forgive sins on earth. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, Rise, pick up your mat, and go home. He rose, picked up his mat at once, and went away in the sight of everyone. They were all astounded and glorified God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, finishing up his Galilean ministry where he was traveling from the different villages, he comes back home to Capernaum and he's at his house there where he set up kind of uh, his headquarters for ministry. And as people began to realize that Jesus had come back there, Uh, they began to gather at his house wanting to listen to his teaching and wanting to receive of the ministry that he had. And so it was must have been quite an event to see if you you think about it. There in his house, I mean, there is not any room. I mean, uh, everybody is crammed into his home. In fact, they're crammed around the doors. You can't get in, can't get out. Uh, And there are these four individuals who are bringing somebody who is paralyzed to Jesus. And so they they come to him. These four men are carrying a paralytic on a stretcher, and they can't get into the house. So what do they do? They decide they're going to go ahead and lower him down through the roof. Now, this is not as unusual. In our day and age, obviously, uh, lowering somebody through the roof means you got to go up and get a ladder you got to climb up onto the roof it's kind of pitched and everything but the homes in those days basically the rooftop was a part of their dwelling and they actually uh, had stairs that would lead up to the roof and you could go up there to do various things so they climbed up on the roof and then they went ahead and opened up through the tiles the uh, the thatch whatever was there and Uh, began to open up a spot large enough to lower this man down. This was not just a small hole. This was a huge hole in the roof. And so the people down below must have seen it taking place. You know, there must have been debris that was starting to fall down on the people. And they heard, you know, the noise of removing the pieces of the roof. And all of a sudden, here comes this man on a stretcher being lowered inch by inch, foot by foot, until he's lowered right down in front of Jesus. That must have been an amazing thing to to behold. And what we have to realize is that the faith at this point, really for this man's healing, was lodged almost exclusively on those four men that were bringing him. the, The paralytic was totally incapable of doing anything himself. But he was submitting himself to the the rigor and the faith that these men had that they would go ahead and do this thing. And so they lowered him down in front of Jesus. And Jesus um, 
then in seeing the faith of those men turns to this paralytic. We don't know how old he is, but Jesus says child, and that could be a sense of endearment as a rabbi, or it could mean that it was a younger man or even a, you know, a younger boy. But all we know is that there was this individual on the mat that was there before Jesus. But what does he say? <clears throat> they were bringing this man for healing. He says to this man, your sins are forgiven. Now, obviously, that was a more powerful thing for the man to have done. Whatever his life might have been, having his sins forgiven would then have put him in the place where he would have been right with God, no matter what happened to his physical body. But this was also a part of what Jesus wanted to say to the individuals that were there, especially to the scribes. These are the teachers of the law. These are the ones that are there not to really receive of his teaching, but to check it out. Kind of like uh, they're there to rule on whether or not what he is saying uh, has any real merit and whether he's violating any of the teachings of Israel. And so they're alarmed. They're just horrified by this. He is saying, how, you know, they're saying to themselves, why does this man speak this way? This is blasphemy. Jesus, of course, knowing what they were saying to themselves, called them out publicly. And um, it's interesting how he did it. He says, you know, why are you thinking such things in your heart? And then he says something interesting. He says, which is easier to say to the paralytic? Your sins are forgiven or to say, rise, pick up your mat, and walk. Well, it's easier to say your sins are forgiven. It's easy to say because you can't prove it. And so at that point, it's merely a blasphemous statement that can or cannot be proven on the basis of anything that they can see going on around them. However, Jesus said, but that you may know that the Son of Man has authority to say, your sins are forgiven. He says to the man, rise, pick up your mat, and go home. That's the harder thing to say because now something has to happen to the man. And guess what? It does. The man rises up, picks up his mat, and goes at once. Now, there's two things that have happened here that are miracles. Number one, this man has been healed of of his paralysis. Whatever he was paralyzed from, it's gone. But guess what? He is also having his muscles completely reconfigured at that moment. Not only is he not paralyzed, I mean, you can be uh, healed of your paralysis, but you still need to get your strength back. You still need to go through rehabilitation to get your muscles back playing because they have been atrophied through the paralysis. Nonetheless, this man rose from the mat right away and even picked up the mat and walked out. Again, so there's been a double miracle. He's been healed, but he has been reconstituted. His, the life has come back to his body already, immediately. And uh, they were all astounded. And I, I love the statement at the end. We've never seen anything like this. Obviously not. Because nowhere in human history has God the Son come down to earth and there not only bring the message of God, but the ministry of God in their midst. They are seeing the miracle that Jesus brings to earth brought right before them uh, in that healing of the paralytic. This, of course, stirs everything in a lot of different ways. But it sets up Jesus again to have a way for those that are around him to listen attentively to what he is saying because of what he is doing. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, it's always good to be with you. And again, what a joy it is to go through the book of Mark, his gospel, and to uh, just glean from it those wonderful things about our Lord.
So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.